Welcome to another multi-SIM demonstration. Today we're going to learn how to build two op-amp circuits in multi-SIM. The first one we're going to build is an inverting amplifier. So let's get started. The first thing we need is the op-amp itself. So I'll go here to analog and then choose the three terminal op-amp. I'll place that down. Now this is shown with the non-inverting terminal on the top and the inverting terminal on the bottom. That's kind of the opposite of the way that I normally think of it. So I'm going to flip it around. Flip it that way and then I'm going to rotate it again. So now the inverting terminal is on the top and the non-inverting terminal is on the bottom. All right, we need a couple of resistors. So I'll grab one here and place it down. Now I need another one so I'm going to click on this duplicate button and that will give me another resistor. I'll use it right there. We are going to use an AC voltage for the input, so I will move that right about there. And then we need a couple of grounds, so I'll click one ground, put it right about there, and then duplicate that, put that right around there. So I think that's all the components that we need for this circuit, so let's start connecting them together. So I'll connect ground to my input voltage source, and then my voltage to my resistor. This resistor goes to the inverting terminal, because this is an inverting amplifier. The non-inverting input goes to ground. The feedback resistor connects there, and it also connects to the output of the op-amp. Now I like to rename these resistors just so that I can remember what's what. So I'll call this R in, and I'll call this R feedback. Okay, now I want to adjust these um, resistor values, I'm going to make the feedback resistor into a 10 kilo ohm resistor for the heck of it. So I'm going to make that 10 kilo ohms and we'll leave the input resistor at 1 kilo ohm. Now I'm going to measure some voltages. I'm going to measure the input voltage and also the output voltage. So I'll put one probe here to measure the input voltage and then another probe over here to measure the output voltage. Oops, and I need to connect that right on that wire. Okay, um, and I can rename these probes also to remind me what is what. So instead of just calling this PR1, I'll call it V in, and I'll call the other one V out. Okay. So now I should be ready to do some simulation. So I'm going to click on the Run button to run this simulation. And then I can click on the grapher to see what's going on. And I see a couple of sine waves. And then I'll stop this so that I can take a closer look. Okay. So I see the green wave and the blue wave. Up here, my my legend tells me that V in is the green wave and V out is the blue wave. So I can see that V out is bigger than V in. So that's interesting. Now I am seeing quite a lot of um, cycles on this graph and that's a little bit more than I want. So I, I'm going to adjust the time here. So I'm going to make my minimum time zero. Hit enter. And then I'm going to make my maximum time just two milliseconds, because that should show me two complete cycles of this graph on the screen, because it's running at 1,000 hertz. That means 1,000 times per second. So each, each period should take one 1,000th one of a second, or one millisecond. So two milliseconds shows me two periods on the screen. All right, so now I'm getting a clearer picture closer look of what's going on. So what I want to do now is I want to actually measure the output. Okay, I know that the input is supposed to be 100 millivolts peak to peak, 
and I want to measure what the, the maximum value of my output is. So I'm going to use some cursors here. So I'm going to use x-axis cursors. Um, and right now you can see that the cursors are green, and so they're tracking to the green line. That's the input line. But I want them to actually measure the output. So I'm going to change that. Um, and I'm going to make cursor uh, 1 V out. Um, and I don't really care about cursor 2. So I'm just going to move this to about the highest point there. And I can see that's about 9 down here. Um, for this cursor, I can see that's about 9.92 volts. If I move it slightly, I get up to 9.97 or 9.98. So um, that that is um, about pretty darn close to 10 volts. And I think I may have misspoken earlier. I think I said that the input voltage was 100 millivolts peak to peak. It's actually if I move this green cursor around, I can see that it's about one volt peak to peak. All right. So the input voltage is about one volt peak to peak, and the output voltage is about 10 volts peak to peak. So our measured gain is our output voltage divided by our input voltage, um, and that would be a gain of about 10, 10 volts over one volt. So this circuit has a measured gain of about 10, and that should line up with our calculated gain. Remember, our calculated gain for an inverting amplifier is R feedback divided by R in. So in this case, that's 10 kilo ohms divided by 1 kilo ohm, or again, a gain of 10. So our calculated gain matches up pretty well with our measured gain. Now there's one other thing to notice about the circuit here, and that is that when the input voltage goes up, the output voltage goes down. Okay, That's why we call this an inverting amplifier. It inverts the sign of the voltage. So when you have a positive input voltage, you get a negative output voltage, and vice versa. When the input voltage goes negative, the output voltage goes positive. Okay, So this is an inverting amplifier. When we're talking about sine waves like this, for the input and output, we say that the, the sine waves are out of phase. That means that when one goes up, the other one goes down. Okay, So inverting amplifiers create an output signal that is out of phase with the input signal. All right, so, so that's how we construct an inverting amplifier using multisim. Now I'm going to change the circuit around a little bit and make it into a non-inverting amplifier. Okay? We can keep using most of the same components, but we're just going to move them around a little bit. Okay? So, um, so now I'm going to move this ground out of the way and move it over here. And then I'm going to move this input over there. Move this ground. Oh, come on. There we go. Move that one over there. Move this ground over there. And connect this there and there. And just by making those changes, now we have a non inverting amplifier. Okay? The input signal is going to the non inverting. Uh, terminal. The inverting terminal um, is going to ground here, and we can run this simulation again, and let's see what happens now. So we'll run this. Um, oh, before I do that, I need to move my, my input probe back onto the wire so that we're getting a good measurement there. Let's try this again. We'll run that. And then we'll look at the grapher. And we can stop this. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Now the the input voltage is coming from the the voltage source over here again, 
So I need to move my input probe over there. Let's try this one more time. And we'll look at the grapher. Um, all right, so now we're seeing an input signal and an output signal. All right, so again, I'm going to adjust the settings so that my minimum time is zero um, and my maximum time is two milliseconds. All right, and now um, my input voltage hasn't changed. It still goes up to about one volt um, peak. Now let's measure the output voltage. The, the maximum uh, output voltage that I'm seeing here is about uh, 10.95, just about 11 volts. Okay. Remember before we were seeing an output voltage of 10 volts, but now we're seeing 11 volts. So let's see what's going on. Remember, we've created a different type of amplifier here. This is the non-inverting amplifier. And so the formula for the gain of a non-inverting amplifier is a little bit different than the inverting amplifier. The gain on a non-inverting amplifier is R feedback over R in plus one. Okay, so in this case, that'd be 10 over, or 10 kilo ohms over one kilo ohm. That's 10 plus one. So that makes a gain of 11, all right? And so that's why we're seeing an output voltage of about 11 volts when our input voltage is about one volt peak, all right? So again, our measured gain, which is our measured output voltage over our measured input voltage, is about the same as our calculated gain, which is just our feedback over Rn plus one. So those two things match up pretty closely, which is good. Now there's one other important difference here to notice between this amplifier and the inverting amplifier. And that is that here, remember with the inverting amplifier, when the input voltage went up, the output voltage went down. But here, that's not the case. Here, when the input voltage goes up, so does the output voltage. So when the input voltage is positive, the output voltage is positive as well. So that's why this is called a non-inverting amplifier. It does not invert the sign of the voltage. If you have a positive input voltage, you have a positive output voltage, and vice versa. A negative input voltage gives you a negative output voltage. Okay, so this is a non-inverting amplifier. When we have an AC signal like this, uh, with sine waves on the input and the output, we say that the input and output signals are in phase. Okay, so for a non-inverting amplifier, the output signal is in phase with the input. Okay, so that's how we can construct a non-inverting amplifier in multi-sim and how we can simulate it and measure the outputs. Now, of course, you could change around the feedback resistor and the input resistor to get different gains if you want, but this is the basic structure of the circuit. So we learned a little bit about how to make inverting amplifiers and non-inverting amplifiers in multi-sim. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you stick around and check out some of the other videos that we have. Thanks for watching.